Welcome back. In Chapter 2, Video 3, we'll be discussing some basic translation strategies for negation, conjunction, and disjunction. These strategies will be the building blocks for more and more complex translations. Let's start with something fairly simple. We have the sentence, both Anne and Bob go to the fair. Using this translation key here, we can easily translate this simply as A conjunction B. Of course, since conjunction is commutative, we could say B and A as well. I'm not always going to write out every equivalent translation, so we'll just take that one away for now, keeping in mind that conjunction is always commutative. Next, we can involve some negation. Anne goes to the fair and Bob doesn't. This is essentially the same as above, except that we negate the B for Bob doesn't go to the fair. And similarly, if we put the negation on the A, we will get a translation for our third sentence, Anne doesn't go to the fair, and Bob does. Now, there are certain ways that conjunction and negation interact that we need to take a systematic look at. First, look here at not both Anne and Bob go to the fair. If you notice the placement of the negation and the both, you see that the both has scope over Anne and Bob going to the fair, and the negation has scope over the whole rest of that claim. So we can easily translate this with the following. We take both Anne and Bob go to the fair, as in our first translation above, and close that in parentheses, and then negate the whole thing. Looking to the right, notice that this is different than both Anne and Bob don't go to the fair. We could write this out long-windedly as both Anne doesn't go, and Bob doesn't go. And this would be translated like the very first translation above, except negating each conjunct. It's not the case that Anne goes, and it's not the case that Bob goes. Notice that there's an important difference here. If we ask the question, how many of them go to the fair in this sentence, the answer is either zero, one, but not two. So if they're not both going, that could be Anne, not Bob, Bob, not Anne, or both, not Anne, and Bob. If we ask the same question here, both Anne and Bob don't go to the fair, then we get how many of them go to the fair? Zero. Not Anne and not Bob. Now if we contrast that with the two below, we get the following situation. Either Anne or Bob doesn't go to the fair. We could expand this to either Anne doesn't or Bob doesn't. That is, we would translate this as not Anne or not Bob. Taking a look to the right, neither Anne nor Bob goes to the fair. This can also be expanded to not either Anne goes or Bob goes, which is to say we take either Anne or Bob goes, A or B, and close the whole thing in parentheses, and then negate that. Again, if we ask the question, how many people are going, if you think about what this has, either Anne or Bob doesn't go to the fair, and remember that this is inclusive, 
what we get here is that, again, not two, one of them, but also because of the inclusive or, it could be zero. So again, just like the above, we get zero, one, or not two of them go to the fair, which means that these two sentences on the left are truth functionally equivalent. Similarly, if we look over here at neither Anne nor Bob goes to the fair, what does that mean? How many of them go? Well, none of them. Zero. So again, these two are truth functionally equivalent. So you can see there's an important interaction between the negation, the parentheses, and the conjunction and disjunction that allows us to state different things and state equivalent things differently. In fact, this is a general pattern you ought to come to be very familiar with, and we can illustrate it with a little diagram. Here are some English sentence schemas and their schematic translations which show the patterns we just discussed. So when you have a not outside of a conjunction with scope over the conjunction, the conjunction will be in the parentheses and the negation will have scope over that whole thing as indicated by the parentheses. When the scope of the negation is smaller, just on the subsentences, and it's the conjunction that has the greatest scope, we get a different claim, both not P and not Q. Similarly, paying attention to the scope of the negation with respect to the disjunction is important as well. When disjunction has the greater scope, it will be translated like this. And when the negation has the greater scope, it's translated like this, with a hook outside of the parentheses, indicating that his scope over the whole disjunction. Now notice I've got, I've arranged this diagram so that the two on the left hand side are equivalent and the two on the right hand side are equivalent. But there is no equivalence horizontally here. So even though there is no equivalence horizontally, the two on the right are consistent with the two on the left. Remember the two on the right are equivalent to each other and they will be true when both P is false and Q is false. But this is one of the three situations that makes the two on the left true. So there's at least one situation in which they're all true, so they're consistent. Now, the equivalences we've been discussing can also be represented horizontally, like this. It's a little slightly more compact way of representing them. And these are known as De Morgan's laws. This is just another way to think about it, another way to help you remember. But the basic idea is that the negation of a conjunction is equivalent to the disjunction of negations. Similarly, the negation of a disjunction is equivalent to conjunction of negations. Knowing these basic facts and being able to move between them will help you to do some basic translations with conjunction, disjunction, and negation. One more thing we can do with conjunction, disjunction, and negation is what we might call restricted quantification. We saw in the first chapter that words such as all, every, some, at least one, and even none were going to be logically important words. 
But the language that we're working with now, the language S, or truth functional logic, can't actually handle these sorts of words, not in the most general sense. But there is a way we can deal with them in a restricted sense. What do I mean by a restricted sense? Take a look at the little bit of our translation key on the right hand side there. Suppose we wanted to say everyone goes to the fair. Well, strictly speaking, strictly speaking, we couldn't say everyone goes to the fair. Because even if we said that Anne goes to the fair, and Bob goes to the fair, and Carol goes to the fair, that wouldn't include everyone. There may well be other people. But suppose we take something a little more restricted. With the understanding that we're only talking about Anne, Bob, and Carol, we could say all three of them go to the fair. In that case, all we in fact need to do is to say A and B and C. Note that even though we have all conjunctions here, I like to be a little bit strict about parentheses, so we do need the parentheses around B and C. We could of course have written it this way, because that's equivalent. We could even have written it this way, and of course there are other variations I'm sure you can come up with. The one thing that I don't like to see, although some logicians don't mind this, is that sentence without parentheses. At any rate, we can easily get all three of them go to the fair, which is a sort of restricted quantity term, since we're under agreement that we're just talking about Ann, Bob, and Carol, by making the conjunction of Ann goes to the fair, and Bob goes to the fair, and Carol goes to the fair. Of course, if we were dealing with four people, then we could do it this way, Ann and Bob, and Carol and Dave, and that would get us all four of them go to the fair. But for the purposes of the following examples, I'm going to restrict us to just the three of them. Now, suppose we wanted to say, again, keeping in mind we're just referring to these three, at least one of them goes to the fair. Well, then we could use the disjunction, either Anne or Bob or Carol goes to the fair. And since that's an inclusive or, that includes the possibility that it's Anne and Bob, but not Carol, or Anne and Carol, but not Bob, or Carol and Bob, but not Anne, or all three of them. So that gets us at least one. How about none of them goes. Well, in that case, right, we can do one of the following two things. Anne does not go, and Bob does not go, and Carol does not go. Right. But of course that is equivalent generalizing on the De Morgan's laws that we just saw above to the following not either Anne or Bob or Carol. And there are a whole host of other variations we could do here. I'll show just a few. How about not all of them go to the fair? Well, we can take all of them go to the fair, which we already saw above. Take that whole thing and negate it. Again, given the De Morgan's equivalences above, we could actually also have written this as either not A or not B or not C. Two more quick variations. How about at least two of them 
go to the fair. Well, one way of doing that is to say that it's either going to be Ann and Bob or Ann and Carol or what's left Bob and Carol. Now we still need one more set of parentheses here and I'm going to use square brackets here and here. Suppose we wanted to do the following. Exactly two of them go to the fair, but we don't know exactly which two. We just know that two of them go. Well, we can combine what we have above. One way to do it would be to take what we have for at least two of them and combine it with what we have for not all of them, or no more than two, with a conjunction like this. So what this comes down to is, at least two, and not all three, which gets us exactly two. Of course, if we're dealing with more than three elements and doing our quantity terms with conjunction, disjunction, and negation, things are going to get very unwieldy very quickly, which is why later on in the book we'll develop an entirely different way of dealing with quantity terms. But for now, it's worth seeing what we can do with just the truth functional connectives, conjunction, disjunction, and negation. In our next video, we'll deal with some of the basics of translating with the arrow and the double arrow.